Today we are doing lesson 2.4, multiplying rational numbers. Our I can statement for today, I can multiply rational numbers and I can solve real life problems. So um, multiplying rational numbers, the general rules are the same as multiplying with integers. When you have two rational numbers that have the same sign, your answer is going to be positive you have two that have different signs, your answer is going to be negative. And they give you an example of what you would have for your signs um, here underneath the problem. So negative eight and two tenths times negative one and seven tenths, same sign, positive answer. For different signs, here's one positive, one negative, eight fifteenths times negative two thirds, and we have a negative final answer. So let's go ahead and do a little practice with some of these numbers. So for our first example, we have two fractions that we're multiplying together, negative six sevenths and negative five halves. All right, so with multiplication, I'm gonna just start by rewriting it with the signs in um, the numerator. I just find that's a little easier to see. So negative six sevenths times negative five halves. All right, so with fraction and de um, with multiplication and fractions, you're just gonna multiply straight across. So I can do negative six times negative five. Six times five is 30, same signs, answers positive, 30. Seven times two is 14. And then I need to make sure that my final answer is simplest form, so I'm gonna start by dividing both these numbers by two. That would give me 15 over seven. And then when I make that into a mixed number, seven goes into 15 twice with one as a remainder. So two and one seventh is my answer for that first one. Now on multiplication problems, some people like to cross cancel. And what that means is looking for numbers that are evenly divisible within the problem before you multiply. So on this problem, six and two are both divisible by two. I could have cross canceled and done two divided by two is one and negative six divided by two is negative three. And then I could have multiplied negative three times negative five is 15, seven times one is seven. It's basically simplifying before you multiply instead of simplifying at the end. Either way is acceptable. Um, cross canceling is helpful when you have larger numbers. All right, let's take a look at example two. Two times negative three and four tenths. So when you are multiplying with decimals, you want the number with more place values to go on the top. It doesn't matter if that one has a greater absolute value. This one happens to have a greater absolute value that's gonna have the most digits. But whatever number has the most digits is the number you're gonna put in the top part of the problem. Negative three and four tenths. Unlike um, addition and subtraction with decimals, for multiplication, you do not line up the decimal points. You la line up the last digit. So this four and the two are lining up Now I know my son, um, problem is gonna have a negative answer because I've got different signs. If it's helpful to you to put the negative where your answer is gonna be before you start, you certainly can do that. All right, now I'm gonna multiply it as if it was 34 times two. I'm gonna ignore that decimal for a minute. Four times two is eight. Two times three is six. Different signs, answer is negative. And then I have to go back and count how many decimal points are in the problem. There is one decimal in this problem, this four tenths. That means I need one decimal in my answer. So I have one decimal in my answer, one decimal in my problem, negative six and eight tenths. All right, let's take a look at this next one, negative two fifths squared. Squared means that you're taking the same number times itself that many of times. So here it would be two times. So that's really this problem, negative two fifths times negative two fifths. 
All right, so we're gonna multiply straight across. Negative two times negative two is positive four, same sign, answer positive. Five times five is 25. Four twenty-fifths is my answer that is already in simplest form. Okay, and then we'll look over here for the word problem. The cell phone company will add a negative three and 85 hundredths to your next bill for each of the five months you were overcharged. How much will be added to your next bill? Okay, so I'm gonna start by writing the number that has the most place values on the top of my multiplication problem. On this one, it's the $3.85 has three digits here. My five only has one digit. I'm lining up my last digits. I do not need to add placeholder zeros. I do not need to line up decimal points. It's only gonna make the problem more complicated if you do that. I have different signs. I know my final answer is going to be a negative number. Five times five is 25. So I'm gonna write my five, carry my two. Five times eight is 40, plus two is 42. Five times three is 15, plus four is 19. This one I'm happening to bring my decimal straight down. That doesn't always happen. You have to count how many decimal places. One, two decimals in my problem. One, two decimals in my answer. So I am going to make sure I have a label here. This one's money. So how much will be added to our next bill? It's gonna be a negative $19.25. All right, let's try another decimal one. Find negative two and five tenths times three and six tenths. Again, it doesn't matter which one um, has a greater absolute value. You just put the one with the most digits on top. Now these both happen to have the same number of digits. They both have two numbers in the problem. So it doesn't really matter which one's gonna go on top. I'm just gonna put the first one on top just cause it's listed first and they have the same amount of place values. Negative two and a half times three and six tenths. My decimals happen to line up here. They don't always have to line up. Okay, so now I'm ready to multiply. Six times five is 30. I write my zero and I carry my three. Six times two is 12 plus three is 15. Okay, I'm gonna cross this out so I don't use it again. I'm gonna add a zero as a placeholder. I'm multiplying as if this was 25 times 36. All right, three times five is 15. So I write my five and I carry my one. Three times two is six plus one is seven. I'm ready to add zero plus zero is zero. Five plus five is 10. So I write the zero, carry the one. One plus one is two plus seven is nine. I have one two decimals in my problem, so I need one two decimals in my answer. So my decimals go in there. And then I have different signs, so my answer is going to be negative. So negative nine and zero hundredths, you could have also just written it as negative nine, means the same thing. All right, here's one with a mixed number. So if I have a mixed number or a whole number in a fraction multiplication problem, I do have to change that whole number or mixed number into an improper fraction before I can multiply. So here I have negative two thirds times negative three and one fourth. So I'm gonna do four times three is 12 plus one is 13. So instead of three and one fourths, I have 13 fourths. And then this negative is gonna go with my 13. And then I have negative two thirds. They're using a parentheses to show multiplication. So I'll go ahead and just keep that consistent. I could have put a little dot in there for multiplication instead if I wanted to. All right, so now I have my numerators lined up, my denominators lined up. I don't need a common denominator for multiplication. I'm just gonna multiply straight across. I have two options. I can multiply straight across and then simplify, or I can cross cancel. I'll go ahead and show it both ways, but you can just pick the one that works best for you. 
A lot of people like to multiply straight across, so I'll go ahead and use that as a strategy. Same sign, I know my answer is positive. 2 times 13 is 26. 3 times 4 is 12. I know both of those are even numbers. They can be divided by 2, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both of them by 2. 26 divided by 2 is 13. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I have 13, 6. I do need to make that a mixed number. Some people like to actually do the um, long division, so I'll go ahead and show it here. I've got some space for it. 6 goes into 13 two times. 2 times 6 is 12. When we subtract, we get a remainder of 1. So my mixed number is 2 and 1, 6. My numbers were the same sign, so my answer is positive. Now, if you are a person who likes to cross cancel, then it would look like this. I'll just do a separate line down here. I personally like to cross cancel, so I think it's a little um, less writing and a little less work, but you can do it either way. All right, I know two and four are divisible by two. So I can do 2 divided by 2 is 1. Really, that's negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. Then I can multiply straight across. Negative 1 times negative 13 is 13. 3 times 2 is 6. 13, 6 is 2 and 1, 6. So it's a little bit less writing. It's not a lot of less writing. Um, when the numbers are small, it doesn't really matter. When the numbers are big, cross-canceling will be helpful. All right, so this one's a little trickier because we have three different values to multiply. They're showing multiplication a couple different ways here. We've got brackets, we've got these time signs. It all means multiplication. I'm going to start by changing that negative 7 into an improper fraction and making it negative 7 over 1. Now, even though these two are grouped in the brackets, and there are brackets here because there are parentheses inside of here for the negative 7, um, I'm just going to choose to use my commutative property, and I'm going to rearrange the numbers so that my 1, 7, and 7 over 1 are next to each other. They're what is called multiplicative inverses. Reciprocals are another word for that. Negative 1 seventh times negative 7 over 1 times 4 fifth. I'm just ignoring the um, brackets because with multiplication I can multiply in any order. All right, so if I'm multiplying straight across 1, negative 1 times negative 7 is 7. 7 times 1 is 7. And then 7 over 7 just means one whole. So now I'm doing 1 times 4 fifths. Well, I know 1 times anything is just that answer. So my answer here is going to be 4 fifths. All right, let's take a look at our next problems. Okay, multiply, write the fractions in simplest form. That means for problems number one and number two that are already written as fractions, you need a fraction answer in simplest form. For number three, which is written in decimal form, you're going to have a decimal answer. Go ahead and pause the video and try these three problems. Okay, let's check our answers. So for number one, I've got negative six-fifths, a negative one half. Okay. Negative six fifths times negative one half. Okay. All right. So if I'm going to multiply straight across, negative six times negative one is going to be positive six. Same sign. Answer is positive. Five times two is ten. Six and ten are both divisible. Divisible. Sorry, by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So my answer for problem 1 is 3 fifths. 
I could cross cancel here and divide by two. Six divided by two is three. Two divided by two is one. And then done negative three times negative one is three. Five times one is five. For problem two, I have an improper fraction. I'm sorry, I have a mixed number. So I need to change that into an improper fraction before I multiply. One third times. Three times two is six plus two is eight. So my improper is negative eight thirds. Okay, so now I'm gonna multiply. One times negative eight is negative eight. Three times three is nine. So negative eight ninths is my answer. All right, and then number three, I have one and eight tenths and negative five and one tenths. Doesn't matter which one goes on top because they both have two place values. So since they're the same, I'm just gonna write the first one on top. The decimals happen to line up on this one, but they don't have to in general just as long as your last place values line up. One times eight is eight. One times one is one. Zero as a placeholder. Five times eight is 40. Carry my four. Five times one is five, plus four is nine. Eight plus zero is eight. One plus zero is one. Bring down that nine. One two decimals in the problem, one, two decimals in the answer. I have different signs here, so my final answer is going to be negative, negative nine and 18 hundredths. Okay, here are three more problems to try on your own. Pause the video and try them. Okay, let's try, um, check our answers. So negative six and three tenths, negative six tenths. Last digit needs to be lined up. Six times three is 18. Six times six is 36 plus one is 37. I don't have to multiply by the zero. I certainly could do zero as placeholder and zero and zero, but I don't need to. It's all zeros that I'm gonna be adding, so I'm just gonna ignore that zero since it's at the front of my number. I don't need it. All right, and then I've got same sign. Answer is gonna be positive. One, two decimals in the problem. One, two decimals in the answer. Three and 78 hundredths. That's my answer on this one. All right, number five, negative two thirds times seven and seven eighths times three halves. Okay, so mixed number needs to be an improper fraction. Eight times seven is 56. And then 56 plus seven, that's gonna be 63. So that's 63 eighths, negative two thirds times, it didn't do a good job of lining things up, but that's okay, because I'm gonna rewrite it, times three halves. Okay, so I just took these first and last numbers and brought them down. Okay, I'm gonna flip flop them so that my three halves and two thirds are next to each other, they're reciprocals. The one is negative and one is positive, so really they're negative reciprocals. So I'm just rewriting my problem in a different order, that's that commutative property. All right, so I'm gonna cross cancel on these two, divided by two, one and one. This one's really a negative one. Three divided by three, one again, one, one. Okay, so I'm multiplying with some ones here. I can just do it all at the same time. Negative one times positive one is negative one, times 63 is negative 63. One times one is one, times eight is eight. So negative 63 eighths is going to give me a negative seven and seven eighths. Eight goes into 63 seven times with seven as a remainder. All right, our last problem here. 
negative 7 and 2 tenths times 1 tenth times negative 100. You can do any two that you want first. I think I'll do these two first. And I'm going to do the work for that down here. Negative 7 and 2 tenths times 1 tenth. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 7 is 7. 1, 2 decimals. 1, 2 decimals. Don't need to multiply by my 0. I am going to put a 0 on the front. Um, the beginning of my number, just make that decimal point stand out. Signs are different. Answer is negative. So now I have negative 72 hundredths times negative 100. Okay, so I'm going to put the 100 on top. It has the most place values. Because I'm not counting the zero in front of the decimal as a place value. Okay, 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 0 placeholder. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 1 is 7. Zero plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 7 is 2. 7, bring it down. 1, 2 decimals in the problem, 1, 2 decimals in the answer. So my final answer here is 72 and 0 hundredths, but I can just write it as 72. Oops, and I almost forgot my signs here. I have different signs. So my answer, oh, wait, no, I do have same signs. Negative times a negative. I didn't write this negative down when I wrote the problem. Same signs, answer is positive, positive 72. All right, and for our last problem here, story problem, the elevation of a sunken ship is negative 120 feet. Your elevation is 5 eighths of the elevation of the sunken ship. What is your elevation? So on key, a key word here for sh um, problems that are fractions or decimals or percents, you see a fraction, decimal, or percent followed by the number or the word of. Then of means multiplication only when it comes after a fraction, decimal, or percent. So 5 eighths of the elevation, which was negative 120. I'm going to go ahead and just write that as a mixed, or I'm sorry, uh, improper fraction, negative 120 over 1. Go ahead and pause the video and finish this problem on your own. Okay, let's check our answer. So if we want to multiply straight across, we can. If we want to cross cancel, we can. Um, I have pretty big numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and divide um, cross cancel before I start doing anything else. So I know 120 um, and 8 can both be divided by... Um, 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 120 divided by 4 is 30. Now looking at that, it looks like I can cross cancel even more. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 30 divided by 2 is 15. Oof, okay. So I have 5 times negative 15 and 1 times 1. 5 times negative 15. Those numbers are kind of big, so if you need to, you can go off to the side, which I will just to show my work. 5 times 5 is 25. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, let's get rid of all of this. And we'll get rid of that. Okay, man, my pen was going crazy there for a moment. Okay. 
So we were doing 5 times negative 15. We were doing it over here. Negative 15 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7. Um, and then I've got my negative because I've got different signs. So negative 75 is my numerator. 1 times 1 is 1. So really I have negative 75 feet. If you wanted to, you could have done 5 times negative 120 and then taken that answer and divided it by 8. That would also still give you the same answer.